buy. There are a lot of choices and a lot of prices right now for Apple's iPad lineup. Small, large, and extra, extra large. The iPad Pro is the newest and the biggest. But are you interested in an iPad? Are you curious what the differences are? It's easy to understand if you break it down this way. For kids or basic reading and browsing, pick an iPad mini. It's the most affordable iPad line, and the 8-inch Mini 2, formerly called the iPad Mini with Retina display, is the cheapest. It's still good. It came out back in 2013. It's had price drops since then. You get the same resolution as the iPad Air, shrunken. There's an A7 processor, which is still good. No Touch ID. If you want to get a little bit more expensive, go with the iPad Mini 4, which has Touch ID, a faster A8 processor, and can handle split-screen multitasking for supported apps. If you're looking for the best bang-for-the-buck all-around tablet in Apple's lineup this year, it's still, in my opinion, the iPad Air 2. It's got the best size, and it's pretty much the best for nearly everything the basic person would need. It still runs faster than the iPad Mini 4, and you can get it on sale for less than before if you look around in holiday shopping. The larger 9.7-inch screen is good for reading, movies, and it still works great when paired with a keyboard case, like this one, to write on the go. Split-screen apps run perfectly, too. Apple still sells the iPad Air for even less than the iPad Air 2, but we don't recommend that one. It's got a slower processor, and basically, for the sales you can get right now, go for the Air 2, because it also adds split-screen apps. Now, if you're an artist or you're a laptop replacement hopeful, someone who wants the biggest and best right now, the iPad Pro is the one. It's 12.9 inches, though, so it's gigantic, and it's expensive, nearly the cost of a laptop. It loses some of that portability, but its biggest advantages are the separately sold pencil, which turns the iPad Pro into an incredibly accurate, versatile art pad like nothing you've ever seen before. And that big screen and its stepped-up speakers do make for fantastic movie watching or games, and you can look at documents or websites in greater detail. Just keep in mind that the iPad Pro doesn't have that many optimized apps yet, and if you're interested in keyboards, the keyboards that connect to this still don't have trackpads and aren't all that much better than what you could get on the iPad Air or Air 2. So in conclusion, for most people, I recommend the iPad Air 2. If you really like to travel, you like to read, get the Mini. And if you like something that's a laptop replacement or you like to be an early adopter, save up for the Pro, possibly. And I wouldn't really consider LTE unless somebody else is paying the bill. 